we're fresh back from the summer that straight up we've got the roof off the van this episode you're going to watch now will actually show you how we go about that and the planning we needed to do to make it happen and part of that is so that we can reproduce the roof gutters for people to use on their builds so i hope you enjoy the show right so you've got to be careful when you say to darren just get that off because you turn around and he's got it off and you're thinking you're going to go back and he's halfway through because when you're confident you know what you're doing and you know where you're going, it's a whole lot easier than when you're experimenting because we've done it a few times, it's a whole lot easier. So all these spot welds through here, these were all done many, many months ago um, because we always knew we had to take the roof off but we just never got back to it. So the front was already released. We've cut through here now through the welds and then the spot welds through here, and there weren't very many, and if you go back and look at one of the previous episodes on the van, it'll show you where we've taken the factory lead out and just how much there was. And we've had a good look this morning. I need to save this drip gutter so that I can get it remade. So we've made the option and he's run the blade. Which one did you end up using, mate, the bigger one? The bigger one, yeah. So people always say, oh, you shouldn't use without a, a guard. If you do this sort of work, you'll get no work done without it. You just got to wear your safety gear, your gloves, your shield. So we're running that up along that edge, maintaining as much of the roof as we can, but I know I've got to add metal back on. So I'm going to TIG weld a piece full length of that. Now I have done a coop with MIG before I had a TIG about, it was cool MIG. 14 years ago or something. Mm. So you can use the MIG. So what we've got now, that whole roof now is released. And you can see here where there's not much of the return left because of where the spot welds were, but I'm gonna now weld a piece back onto that so that I can spot weld it back onto the new gutter. Remember, I'm gonna make new gutters. So that sort of makes that bit easier you run the blade along and you're done but you then got to weld the other bit back on and i'll get darren just to explain a little bit about what he's run into here because we've now got some overlaying panels so we've got a panel here the drip gutter then the roof um so just try and fill us in a little bit on what you worked out mate uh, basically just to get this panel off at the back we have to, I don't really want to drill holes all the way through, otherwise it's a lot of repair work. Um, so we've drilled through our normal spots at the, in the gutter there. And um, also then I've cut the lip off the roof, just like I did the sides, and took that panel out. And then if I drill through the two panels, which is the gutter and the roof panel, it sort of releases from this back panel the longer don't go all the way through. Just grab that drill with the spot weld drill in it and we'll show you what we're using because they're available most sort of um, industrial places or you can get them on eBay. I'll try and not cut my finger here. So you can see there, this is all now loose because he's cut this the same as this, but we don't want to lose the bottom panel, but I need this full gutter off the shell to give to Jamie again to make us some new ones. Now, I would have got away with using the one that's on here, but I thought if I got the roof off, I might as well help you guys by getting some made. So that drill, one we use is very flat with a point, and as the point wears down, they get a bit tired, but that's pretty much what we use. Darren's even been able to sharpen those at times. Um, on the linisher or on the grinder? On the linisher, you get yeah. one or two. So you was at it and that's it. At yeah, once you've had a couple of goes. Yeah. So when that drills down, it'll drill. I might even do just on a small piece of metal to show you, but it drills very flat. So you can drill through one panel and save the other one. Because we don't need to save the gutter, we're drilling through this panel, this panel, and saving the one underneath. So if you're gonna get something off, you've got to sacrifice one or the other. In a lot of cases, like on, on bonnets and things, you can drill the spots out and plug weld them back on in the same position because we're gonna do the drip gutters with a, um, a spot welder. I need a full piece of metal. So if I drilled every spot weld out, by the time you chiseled it off and got it to release, you'd spend, another, you'd spend more time repairing what's left than putting a new piece on. 
That's what we've found from experience. Yeah. So we're released to there. So we're now going to, well, I'm not. He's going to release the rest of it. And then we'll lift it off. And then that'll give us an opportunity, or me an opportunity then to do some of the dents and things. We'll get all these bits off. So that's where we're up to. Right, so to get this to release, once you do that drilling, it always leaves a little bit, and you would have seen this on some of the other things we've done, but you just see, I'll just get him to give this a whack to show you just how hard you've got to hit it sometimes. Now all we're using there is a wood chisel that I buy, you know, the cheap range, but see how it's got the steel in where you hit it with a hammer. If you buy the plastic one, they don't last very long. And if you can find a chisel, and they're pretty rare now that the steel goes all the way through, they're really good as well, or better. But we just, it knocks the tip around really quickly. We just take it out and put it on the linish here and sharpen it back up. And then we've got some little short ones that are probably only down to his finger there because they've been ground that many times. And then they're handy for getting into tight spots and you go and buy another one for 20 bucks and go again. So I'll just get him to knock a couple of those off if he's got any left. So like I said earlier, the process we're trying to do now is to look after that lower panel. And you can see there, once he's got it off. Just go along and knock it back up. So we now got the right shape, but we know it's released off the gutter because we're gonna take the, the roof off and then take the gutter off and then leave that panel there hopefully, and if it needs any little repairs we will, and then the three of those all get spot welded back together once we go to put it back on. So Darren tells me he's got everything cut and shut and ready to come off, so it's probably going to be fairly sloppy and flop around, so we're going to lift it off, sit it on one of our plastic tables, and um, we'll see just how flexible it is when it comes off. Not too bad, just if when you go on the flats when it becomes a problem. Okay. Now, I wonder what we got for Russ. Right, I said so now's the time to find out whether you got any more rust. So this drip gutter, I haven't seen one of these before, so it's just got a flat edge, totally different to all the other drip gutters that we've used. So it's got like one step up and then a little have spot welds along. So we'll now be able to remove that in one piece, which was the plan. Then we got a little bit of rust starting here. 
So the moisture's gone up under and in, and it's rusting on the inside. So the advantage of doing what we've done now, we can get to it. And you can see this brown, being it's a little bit hard because it's a brown car, but I would say the only paint that's in here is overspray from when the car was painted. Um, and back here you can see, we'll take that gutter off now where he's done the spot weld. So it'll be the same spot weld for all three panels. We should be able to remove that drip gutter all in one piece so that we can use that for a template to make them or get Jamie to make us some new ones. But it's interesting, there's not much strength in a lot of it. It's all pretty, you know, one, each part holds the next part together, pretty much. Well, we thought this was going to be a nice or easy remove, but now it's under another panel there, and it's been spot welded one, two, three, and it's the fourth panel being spot welded, so it's a little bit more difficult than what we thought. We could probably cut this along that line and take it off and make it as per factory if someone wants to put it in. But I'm thinking I might put it over the top of that one and weld it on, and then the roof will still sit back on it. Won't be factory, but it'll be more than strong enough. Mm. But I mean, if someone's trying to do the full, oh, it's all original, they can drill all that out and take all that off, but I don't know that we need to do that. What you think's gonna be easy sometimes ain't so easy. Yeah, the only other way, I suppose, if we, if you remove that panel there and drill the spots from that. See where this is, we might do that. Mm. See, not always easy. Righto, so just like that, Darren's just drilled out all of those spot welds and they come out pretty good. And if you get, take your time and make sure you've got to cut through, this is all factory bronze, they used a lot of that bronze in the factory back in the 70s. So that panel's come off, you can see there they're bare metal inside, just start to rust a bit, but um, that'll clean up quite nicely. And then now, what I was talking about earlier, you can see here that, that gutter can now be removed off the actual structure of the vehicle and we can make exactly the right part. Is that all one piece there or two pieces? It's just one piece. Okay, so it steps around the corner, so the gutter is separate. So we'll keep drilling, or well, Darren will keep drilling and we'll have that off. It's interesting to see, you can see the rust here, wouldn't have been long and that would be starting to become a real problem and I was just playing with that, it's interesting how soft that is without this extra structure making it a box section, this, this feels like about 1.2 mil and that's going to hold the, the lift gate, the tailgate up.
Right, so we've made a bit of progress. So this is day two of the drip gutter scenario. That is effectively the gutter. So we weren't sure how much there was going to be of it. So you've got the gutter and you're really just seeing from here out on the car and then all the rest of it is sitting up underneath. So put that back on out where we removed it from. This now becomes part of the roof structure and then when we put the roof back on, it'll sit back in here and be spot welded back onto that from the underside. So part of our plan obviously was to get it off so we can get some new ones made so that everyone else can get some. Um, and we, Darren's now straightened it up so that it will fit correctly so when we make them, they'll be the right shape because you can see here there's a curve here and then it straightens up and it goes straight. But as you can tell here, once you take, take, start taking the double panel sides of things out of it, so we remove that, which would add strength. And then once the roof goes on, that's what creates the strength in the, the car because it's quite interesting when you look at things like this that none of this is attached to anything. And the reason for that is the body shell on a van is effectively a ute shell with a bit added on. And if you look up the top there, this is the windscreen opening, is the same as a ute, and then that's the top of the ute, and then it goes back down and along, and they've just added on this section to make the panel van. So this bit here is the panel van. If it was a ute, it would be down through here. So I have no concerns about it being in the rotisserie with, a, with the roof off it because the structure of the ute is all still in place. So what we're doing now is we're cleaning this up. So I did a little bit of footage when Darren was making a noise, knocking all those back into shape. And I've shown it before on the channel where I use a nice bright torch, and this one's really bright. And I put it in from the back and things like this show up. So we've drilled that spot weld out a bit too deep and that needs welding up. But what we have now is rust holes. Oh, got me. So you can run your torch along there and find out because quite often you've got holes that you didn't realise you had. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut it through here, just inside about three mil in there, up to, I think we decided about here somewhere, and we're going to make a new piece to go in there. It's just a straight bend. Remove all of these, put that in, put them back on, and the rest of it's pretty good. So what been using is just like a really coarse um, paint remover. Um, a lot of these are made for doing heavy industrial where they want to use remove the scale before they weld and they're very hardy. They're, they'll last twice, three times as long as the black ones, which we use a lot of those as well. They're really good on outer body panels, but this is like that next level up, but you've got to be careful because the metal's not very thick. So that or that, and then the new tool that we've got now, this little Merca tool, which is variable speed, is unbelievable. So it's got scotch Bright and it's also got, um, so they're the screw on style, and the scotch Bright and also flapper and then normal sanding, but this scotch bright has been going really good, especially in some of the lower areas. So we'll get all that cleaned up, going to take us quite a few weeks to get the gutters made but we'll just keep working our way around and fix the rust that we've got and then get some gutters and we can start thinking about putting it back together. So we spoke earlier about this section and, and the fact that we might have to just overlay and not put it back as per original. Darren's gone ahead and removed that panel and he's done a good job of that so that's come out nicely in one piece and I'll talk about that in a minute. But what it's enabled us to do is to take, to drill out the spot welds that held the drip gutter on. And we've been able to take the drip gutter out in one piece from the underside. So where we talked about all these other double panels. So we've still got the structure. Now we've got the drip gutter. And it's interesting, it's got these little bumps in it. So we're gonna to need to put those back in because what we've worked out with that is when this panel goes on, 
on the underside of that, if I can get that in position, the factory's put that in there so that, oh, look at that sharp one. So they've put that in there so that this panel will sit on there so that it makes it the right depth on this side because that becomes the shape of the car. So sometimes you look at things and go, I wonder why they did that? So when we make that gutter, we're going to need to put something like that back in there to make sure it goes in properly. So that's all come off really good. The other interesting thing that I find when I do stuff like this is you look at the way they've made things. Look how soft that is. So that's holding the, the hinge for the, the top gate. But it's quite thin because once this other panel goes back on, it creates a box section and makes it strength. If I was making that on a trailer or something, I'd probably use twice the thickness of steel that the factory used. So I just always find those things really interesting. So we've got to do some clean up now. This gold stuff here, the bronze, that's all from the factory. A lot of people think someone's done a rust repair, but the, the factory used to do a bronze tack on the edges of panels. And it's a bit of a, um, a little difficult to get off. It's soft and we'll show you how we're going to do that. And I think last time when we were doing sill panels, we ended up heating it up with the oxy. But you can grind it off, but we're trying to maintain as much of the parent metal as we can so that when we put it back together, we don't weaken it anyway. Okay, as we showed you last time, all the rust that was in this panel, this is the old panel I've cut out. Um, you can see it's very rusty. So I've made up a new panel, exactly the same. Put it over the top, scribed it, and then cut it out, and that gives you a perfect line uh, to mate up with the original panel. And then all I need to do now is tack it in, and then how it'll probably go along and fully uh, TIG weld it. So Darren's been able to weld that all up now. So you can see here he's just sort of welded, you know, an inch at a time. We like to tack it all in weld it and cool it with air as you're going, trying to reduce the amount of warpage. And it seems to have worked pretty well this time. This centre bar here has got a brace in behind it, like that one up there. But it, it had come off previous to us even working on the car and didn't really think to actually should have clamped it because I'm going to remove those when I get rid of the windows. But you'll see here, when you put a straight edge along there, and pull that up tight to the bracket, there's nothing in it. But if you just let go of the bracket there, and you can see how much that moves. So it's all very light, it's all only one mil. And there's, you know, it's very easy to move it without the structure in place. So once um, we sand that up, then we'll, um, and I do the window, I'll then look to straighten everything up before we start putting the gutters and all back on. Okay, we're just gonna sand the weld down now with something that's pretty hard backed. Uh, we usually use a flapper most of the time, but it's close to the edge and we don't want it to dig in and take out too much metal. So we use something with a hard base and then that way we can get it as flat as possible. and flat. Righto, so the next job at hand, um, now that we've got that off, these vents here, so these are for the flow through ventilation. And over the years they've had them, you know, down inside the panels down here on XA. With the panel van they chose to put them here and they look pretty darn ugly. So when I had my old one, I always thought it'd be good to get rid of that. So I've decided to do that and I'll make a decision whether I choose to add any ventilation because it's aircon anyhow. So I'll work that out later. And the side vents on the side windows on these leak like a bloody souvenir, so it probably won't make any difference. So we've already done the other one, you can see up there. So I'll get the camera on this one. So what we're gonna do, this is pressed in obviously, we're gonna cut down through here, knock that back in flush tack it all together and then um, tick it up, knock it up and then we won't need to put the panel back on the inside. So 
in here just to support what they've done there and that used to have a little vent in it is that one so just cut that through the bottom here the other side that wasn't attached on the top so it'll probably be the same on this side and I'll get a couple of shots of it as um, Darren's cutting that up so just like that it's gone Now I've just run the one wheel blade down through there and we'll be able to knock that down, tack it in place and um, Bob's your uncle, actually he's my mate. Right, what we're looking at there now, it's been tacked with a TIG and just cleaned up with a probably 120 grit on the little Merca and now tapped up so that it's flat and now that can be fully welded with the TIG and finished off. People all, um, if you're watching this and you're going to use um, TIG, when it comes to the actual tip, so the electrode, we're using a one mil. And when I say that to people, they go, they've never heard of a one mil. So most of them are a 1.6. And the filler wire we use is a 1.6, but it's for sheet metal. So it's a low, um, that's 1.6, and the copper that's on there is just to stop it from rusting. It's not actually anything special. Um, I buy them as a rod. You can use MIG wire, but you just need to use the low tensile. That's the word I was looking for. So you don't want high tensile. So even with your MIG wire, you can buy a different MIG wire for doing structural work versus doing sheet metal. So when you're buying your wire, just make sure you're using the stuff and it really means that it's quite soft to bend, bend it in your fingers. The high tensile, like MIG wire, when it comes out of the MIG and you can't even tie a knot in it, that's the high tensile. You want the, the low tensile for doing sheet metal work. And the reason for that is when you go to hammer it, to get your shape back into the panel, you need it to be able to move and stretch without it cracking. So if you're welding with MIG in through a panel, and it wants to crack all the time when you try and heat shrink it or panel beat it, you're probably using the wrong wire. So that's pretty much a wrap on that. And the advantage of that TIG welding, you can see there that you get no pinholes. The whole thing's nice and flush. And he's cleaned the inside up as well, but I mean, once you sort of clean that metal up, you don't really know you've even been there. A little bit more panel and filing for me to do and then it'll be um, all good to go. Righto, bare metal and rusty panels. So this has been in bare metal for some time and I had it up on its side with this facing upwards. And what happens is the moisture sits on it and it makes it go rusty. Now, using the deoxidine will reduce that process but it doesn't stop it. So this is probably six months old and I was very slack and didn't redo it. This patch here, I did that about a week before Christmas. So that'd be three weeks ago now, two and a half, three weeks ago. So you can see how that's come back nice and, and shiny. So we're gonna do the whole lot in a minute, but I just wanted to show you. So that's been sitting for a few weeks and showing no sign of rust yet. But any more than what this is, see how that goes brown like that? That's getting to a point where you're gonna have damage to the panel because you don't keep the deoxidine process up to it. So it's normally every couple of months, if I've got bare metal panels laying around, I'll just give it another quick coat. So lesson learned, even someone like myself, we get lazy, we don't do it. But what'll happen, if I get my, oh, wrong bucket, I'll leave that one in there. 
So this is um, the deoxidine from Henkel distributed by PPG. And it's just a bit of scotch bright. And there's a process which we'll go through in a minute, but just to show you how quickly it works. So that's the actual, so it's a phosphoric acid and then it's all washes off with water. You can see just how quick that works, but when you look in deep, you can see where that gray rusty bits were, where the color's a little bit different. So it start, the rust is eating into the metal. So that's why we try to keep on top of it and not let it go brown, because once it's going brown, then it's starting to eat into your metal. All right, so you can see we've come down to here. So I'll just show you as quickly as I can, maybe just this piece. So you can see the acid just running down there at the moment. So like I was saying, this was probably left a little too long, but it's coming off pretty good. Don't have to use any sanding motion. This, this is Scotch Bright is like 360 based, equivalent of 360 grit. And I mean, this panel will probably get done a couple of times more before we go to paint it or anything. So that's the acid process. So once you've done that, get a dry rag and remove that product. And that really needs a little bit more of a scrub. You can see where it's been running down from up the top. But take it off dry. Then we get just some clean water. Always better if you're outside because you can rinse it even better, but it needs a good rinse because you're trying to remove that product off of there. Now we get a dry rag with our air gun. We end up with that bluey copper look, which is the look we're after. Now, if you look up here, you can see where that's brown and that's white. That there, the acid hasn't been removed enough. And this one here, it didn't get dried quick enough. So it started to rust when it had the water on it. So we're looking for this finish. So I'll get the back of it done now. You can see there, when we've done this part, that's just where the product's running down and taking the that deoxidized metal, which is rust, off of the panel. Rightio, so that's as far as we've got this week. What you see on the show is pretty much where we're at week by week. So what we're gonna do is put this one to bed, get it up on air, and then we'll try and get some work done over the next couple of weeks so we can show you some more in two weeks time.